From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Montana's newest university opens its doors. It was also a day for me of gratitude to the community for the support. Plus the perfect place for kids to find a moment of zen. She needs to get her energy out, so this is a great place to do that. And we'll take you to a little known mountain biker's paradise right here in Montana. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning. On this Friday, July 14th, I'm Augusta McDonald. Celebrating a milestone is always better surrounded by the people who helped you get there. One graduation this week is more than a milestone. It's an inspiration. Graduations are inspiring. It's a time to celebrate dreams, hard work, and bright futures ahead. It's a rite of passage as you grow up. But today, it's mom's turn to graduate. This day is a miracle, um, and I'm just so grateful and thankful. She's not getting a degree. She's gaining a new way of life. It has been a hard journey, you know, but one that was so worth it to, to find deep, dig deep inside within myself and heal all those hurts that kept me out there lost. It's the first graduation of the Yellowstone County Indian Child Welfare Act Family Recovery Court, established just a couple of years ago. The court gives parents a chance to go through substance abuse treatment and regain custody of their kids. This award, one year and nine months in the making. I'm just like so grateful for my mom for being the person that um, showed me that recovery is possible. She, she worked so hard. An inspiration to her community. What you've been through is one of the biggest scourges in our community. Um, and you know, it's taken so many families down and um, you've proven that it doesn't have to. A light ahead to others walking the same path, who now have an example of the bright future possible for them too. Kyle, you're an inspiration, and I just want to say congratulations. I love you, and I can't wait to get to where you are. The ICWA Recovery Court in Yellowstone County is one of the first in the United States. It's headed up by uh, Judge Rod Souza. And I just want to say, Kyle Spang completed over 400 hours of treatment, 56 court hearings, 180 self-help meetings, and 344 drug tests to make it to her graduation. So congratulations to her. And now we have some breaking news this morning. At least one person is killed in a fatal vehicle versus motorcycle crash in Billings early this morning. According to this social media post from the Billings Police Department, the wreck happened at the Midland Road, Maloney Lane, I-90 underpass, and King Avenue West intersection. So for now, both exit ramps from I-90 are being diverted, and all the northbound traffic onto King Avenue West is closed. We'll continue to update you as we knew, know more about both the fatal and the, and the traffic changes this morning as you're headed to work. Um, so, Miller, thank you for uh, uh, tracking the uh, sunny temperatures this weekend yep. and having some good news for us as we're looking forward to a great summer weekend. Yeah, you know, it's summer all weekend long. You know, we do cool down just a little bit today. We're back behind a cold front, so our temperatures come down just a bit, and then it's about to get very hot. Really, one of the big stories this weekend, the surface smoke coming in from Canada, and I'll explain why that is with the main forecast coming up. Let's take a step back in time. Yesterday, pretty typical summertime day on target with those highs and lows. Top gust yesterday of 27 miles an hour. We did have a little bit of rain, but nothing really measurable. Uh, now you're gonna notice our totals for the month starting to go down. And we may add to that number in the deficit column because there is not a whole lot of rainfall we anticipate coming in for the rest of the month. Uh, but for the year, we're still pacing ahead. So we've had a really good uh, first half of the year with a lot of moisture, already at just over 92% of our actual annual total already. But as we move forward, just a lot of dry conditions anticipated. 58 right now at the airport, humidity at 78%, the dew points at 51 degrees, winds out of the southwest at about 12 miles an hour. Pretty quiet out there, still in Weibo there. We do have a little bit of rain that's pushing over into the Dakotas right now. Temperatures mainly in the 50s and some 60s to start. Highs today could see some 70s cooling down enough, but it doesn't last. We've got 90s in the forecast, but where? We'll tell you about that and that surface smoke coming up here in just a bit. All right, Miller, thank you so much. And finding a cure for cancer, of course, takes one step at a time. Relay for Life Yellowstone is happening tonight. Everyone is invited to the Massive American Cancer Society fundraiser right here in Billings with the Survivor's Lab starting at 6.45 p.m. at the West High Track. Again, this is tonight. It'll be followed by a caregiver's lap this, uh, this year. And as the sun goes down, the Luminaria ceremony, plus 
the Magic City's first drone show in lieu of fireworks. Again, this is at the West High Track. It's going to be a great night. And there's also this, a giant inflatable colon that you can walk through. So we're aware that's kind of a humorous sentence. It's all a little weird. But the reason for this exhibit is not a laughing matter. It's a model of what doctors might actually see during a colonoscopy. So when you walk through, you'll see healthy colon tissue, precancerous polyps, those polyps growing and then turning into cancer. It's a larger than life reminder to get screened starting at age 45. One Billings woman tells us she did and it may have saved her life. Dr. Hill found quite a large polyp when she did my colonoscopy and I was relieved to find out that mine was precancerous rather than cancerous. When I got my results, I was so relieved. It really hit home. This procedure saved my life. Had I waited, had I delayed getting the screening done, my story would be totally different. I may not be here. Colon cancer is the second most common type of cancer, just behind breast cancer. And new this morning, Yellowstone National Park is helping Montana's Native American tribes with bison reintroduction projects. MTN's John Shearer shows us how that will happen. In our language, uh, we, when we say today is a good day, we say le on petu ki alo. And today is definitely a good day. This ceremony at the site of the newly expanded Buffalo Quarantine Facility in Yellowstone National Park marks a dream for the future. And I always talk about how they wanted to get rid of buffalo and consequently get rid of Indians, but the buffalo are still here, we're still here, and we're still fighting to bring them back to, to our culture. They're a big part of us culturally, uh, spiritually. Let's start talking more about restoration and about healing and really everything that this program is about. I fundamentally have a, a serious problem as a superintendent of Yellowstone and shipping bison to slaughter. It's probably one of the most unpopular things to the American public. And it's something that we need to work together to move away from. To that end, this facility was greatly expanded during the past year, thanks to a half million dollars put up by the park and another 500,000 raised from donations. The fact that we are where we are and the arduous and hard work it has taken to get here shows uh, we can do hard things together. We can um, rebuild, we can make amends, and we can gain acceptance. Uh, and that is truly what uh, this moment captures. Now, this event today was as much about thanking and congratulating each other for efforts to save more bison and share them with tribal members. It also seemed like a promise to themselves and to the public to continue to work on that until at some point in the future, perhaps no bison will have to be killed in Yellowstone National Park. I'm John Shearer, MTN News. And now back here in Billings, Rocky Vista University is officially open. Montana's newest college and first time medical school welcomed new students, their families and city leaders to the West Billings campus. Yesterday's ribbon cutting comes as the United States faces a massive shortage of healthcare workers. It's why Rocky Vista's dean says Billings, which is the medical hub of Montana, is the perfect spot for the new university. Today wasn't just a celebration of the promise of a wonderful future, but it was also a day for me of gratitude to the community for the support and the welcoming embrace that, that we can be part of this community. We'll have about 80 students who will start in two weeks on July 24. This is the future physician workforce of the state, this region, this country, this world. So very excited about our students coming in. You can check out the university as well. Rocky Vista will be holding a public open house tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Billings parents love taking their kids to the Wise Wonders Children's Museum, but uh, even staff will tell you it can sometimes get a little hectic with excited little ones running from exhibit to exhibit, and that's why they've created this brand new calming cave. Can we get one here, IQ2? It's a nice, peaceful, dark area where children can relax and take a break from the rest of the space, from dim lighting and white noise to bubble towers to light up wall features the cave took years to put together. It's already being put to good use. There's nothing available publicly like this, and I've done some research, and even in Montana, I would say you'd be hard-pressed to find a room that is built the way we've designed it. 
And to make sure the calming cave stays calm, parents are required to go in with their kids. And new this morning, action in Acton. Q2's Charlie Kleps hops on the trail to find out why the small Montana town is turning into heaven for mountain bikers. On the Trail is sponsored by St. Vincent Healthcare, now part of Intermountain Health. Montana is a state that's known for its hiking trails, but it's also a legendary place to do a little mountain biking. Here in Acton, there's thrills at every turn for bikers. And while some may not know about it, for those that do, it's exactly the adrenaline rush they're looking for. Mountain biking definitely gets that heart rate up and, and gets you going. There are a lot of different ways to take in Montana's beauty. And for 19-year-old Ethan Oleschuk, there's no better way to take in these views than from the seat of his bike. Really what drives me to mountain bike is I would just say, I mean, being out here, being in the outdoors, getting outside and doing something. That drive to explore is just part of the reason you'll often find Ola's Chuck on the trail. He's also an adrenaline junkie. I love um, just getting that rush, you know, whether that be mountain biking or snowboarding or anything that can kind of just get your heart moving. Ola's Chuck tries to hit the trails three or four times each week. When he isn't doing this, You'll find him working at the ski station in Billings. The cool thing about what I do is I get to see more people getting into the sport or you know, getting a new hobby and getting a new passion. It just takes one person to say, hey, you can borrow my bike and we'll go out biking and it might be a, a hobby and a passion that never stops. Olus Chuck says that's how he got his start. And for those less experienced, like myself. Slower than you think. Do this <laughs> wow. <laughs> The Acton Recreation Area near yeah. Broadview is a great place to start. They offer something for everyone. You know, I'll bring my younger brothers out here, or, you know, I'll bring a, a first timer that's never mountain biked. And it's really just a good um, bridge to gap into getting into the sport. The area features a variety of trails, varying in difficulty level, a unique experience, and just another hidden gem less than an hour away from Billings. This is just right in your back door, and I bet half of the people in Billings don't even know it exists. Near Broadview, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Great story. Thank you, Charlie. And now on to some sad news to pass along this morning. Laurel firefighter Sean McCleary passed away after a two-year battle with brain cancer. The Shepherd Volunteer Fire Department sent condolences to his family and the Laurel Fire Department in a Facebook post just last night. Back in January, our Casey Conlon talked to McCleary about how he dedicated his life after his diagnosis to helping other cancer patients like himself. We had so many people helping us out, so that's what we want to do and it's not like we're you know got a million dollars or anything to help but we do what we can sean started the sean mccleary pay it forward foundation for brain cancer awareness and support you can learn more about the amazing impact he made on the foundation's facebook page